The Clippers, after last night's crazy game, now see themselves in an 0-2 hole going to Game 3 on the Dallas Mavericks home court. This is absolutely pathetic. There is no better word to describe it, so I'm going to be saying the word pathetic intermittently throughout the entirety of this video. Time after time, I have given the Clippers the benefit of the doubt. When I did my preview video for this series, I picked the Clippers to win in five, maybe six games and they lose the first two games on their home court. And the reason is that I made the mistake, as I hinted was a possibility in that video, of actually believing in the Clippers again. I have given this team the benefit of the doubt over and over and over again, and they have been nothing but pathetic in response to that. The Clippers are in a very bad spot, and I am going to talk about some ideas of how I think they could actually get out of it, but for the most part in this video, I just want to shit on this Clippers team because they are pathetic. So I guess let's do that. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, then please subscribe for daily playoff content on this channel. Also, drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Also, real quick, if you are not subscribed to my second channel, that is really where the best content right now, or at least the most frequent content is happening because I'm uploading two videos a day on that channel covering every single playoff game. Yesterday I did a video on my initial reaction to this Clippers versus Mavs game two uh, and that's the best performing video on that second channel ever. So go check out that channel. It's much appreciated. That's where I do all my post game recaps, yada yada. So let's just call the first part of this video a roast session, I suppose. I think that's like 5% cringe, but that's kind of what it's going to be. So first things first, the Clippers pulled off a tank job to play this team. Now I understand that's not like something that has not been talked about already, but like seriously, when you really think about it, it's actually genuinely pathetic. Like they lost games to the Rockets and the OKC Thunder, the two worst teams in the league, in an attempt to get a worse record so that they could instead face the Mavericks over the Lakers. They were scared of the Lakers. Now, normally I would kind of roll my eyes at the notion of a team being scared like this. I would just say, hey, that's just good strategy. Although I actually don't necessarily agree with that because I think striking the Lakers in round one is the best time to strike them. But regardless, hoping that maybe another team takes them out along the way so you don't even have to bother facing them. I understand the strategy of it. And I actually think it makes some sense. But you know what? Fuck it. This team, once again, doesn't deserve my benefit of the doubt, so I'm just gonna say they're a bunch of p I think that's the first time I've used that word on this channel, but come on, guys. <laughs> but they really dodged the Lakers, and they were like, okay, let's, let's, let's get the Mavericks, this will be an easy matchup. And then they got bitch slapped in the first two games on their home court. That's just genuinely hilarious. In these first two games, Luka is averaging 35 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists, and he is getting those numbers effortlessly. Why is he getting those numbers effortlessly? Well, the defense isn't putting up much effort, so why would he need to put up much effort to score if he can just do it haphazardly? He legitimately looks like there is a middle school game where for some reason there is a high school senior varsity starter playing in the middle of it. Like, he's just messing around out there. He took a three that was one-legged, like, fading away at the end of the third quarter. Like, he's just playing. This is just... This, I know it's a game, but like it's literally just a game to him. He does not respect this team at all. And it's, once again, genuinely hilarious, especially being that this is a team that is supposed to be known for their defense and Luka is acting like they're on the playground. Now I will say the actual schemes by the Clippers as well as the matchup has not actually been terrible. I did give this team a bit of a pass in my second channel video. However, in hindsight, like literally the day after, the more and more I think about it, I shouldn't have been like, okay, well, it's not really the Clippers fault that Luka just makes every shot. But you know what? I think the problem is that no one on this Clippers team, and once again, this is kind of a cliche, 
but no one has taken this matchup personally. I know it was hilarious and memeable when MJ said I took it personally and it was like over very like very little things uh, but that mentality does actually take you pretty far. If someone on this Clippers team took this matchup personally, I guarantee you the way they've been playing defensively would change. The clearest issue with this Clippers defense really speaks to the overall mentality problem with this team on really both ends of the court, but especially defense. The biggest issue is they have been switching without any resistance whatsoever. There was one play in particular towards the end of the fourth quarter where the, um, a Mavericks player just kind of suggested the idea of setting a screen and the Clippers were like, okay, let's switch this. Like a screen hadn't even happened. And it wasn't even like 50% about to happen. And then they switched Patrick Beverly onto Luka Doncic. And it's like, dude, put up some fucking effort to not give Luka a huge mismatch. He has been bitching Patrick Beverly this entire fucking series. And you're going to just give him that? He didn't even really work for it. That's why I said it's not effortless. Luka didn't work for that mismatch. He just fucking got it because the Clippers weren't even really trying. And because of that zero effort to fight through a switch to prevent making a bad switch, instead, they just let it happen, which speaks to this Clippers team's mentality. They just fucking let it happen. Now, this is not me being some old head that is anti-switching like Shaq on TNT when he got destroyed by Candace Parker, but you can avoid switching and especially giving up mismatch in many of the instances in which the Clippers did. Switching is generally the right strategy, but when you're doing it for no fucking reason, then no, it's not. And this is a comment that I saw on Twitter that was commented on a TSO Sage video, but someone made the point of, if we're gonna keep praising Kawhi Leonard and Paul George for being the perimeter defensive talents that they are, why the fuck are they not on Luka constantly? At least one of the two of them. Very often it's like Marcus Morris or Patrick Beverly or Nick Batum, and it's like, dude, you guys are known for your defense, Play fucking defense. I don't care that you also have to put energy on offense. If you're supposed to be an all defensive talent, you're not gonna shy away from a matchup because you have shit to do on offense. This is the same issue that many people had with Giannis when he wasn't defending Jimmy Butler. Now, Giannis was not specifically choosing not to do that. It was really Mike Budenholzer. But regardless, they were like, you're the defensive player of the year and you're conserving energy for offense? Fuck that shit. If you're that good defensively, put your energy into it, regardless of how that might affect your offense, because that's supposed to be a part of your identity. You can't just half-ass something that you're supposed to be good at and expect not to get shit for it. But because of this issue that runs deep with this team, that just simply not going the extra mile, not seeming like they care, this, this extends past just this matchup. It's kind of a problem this is, that's existed with the Clippers forever. There's not all that much camaraderie, they don't have team chemistry, they don't seem to actually care about winning all that much, uh, there's selfishness here, there is a lack of effort, it seems like Kawhi kind of breathes this mentality within the whole team where it's like we're clocking in, clocking out, I don't actually care about the result of this, this is just my 9 to 5. That shit matters when the other team on the other end just realized that you intentionally lost games to play them and they are taking that shit personally. This issue speaks to the problem with the Clippers and the reason why they were disappointing last year and are on pace to be disappointing again this year. Because I have absolutely zero fucking reason to believe that this team is going to come back through adversity. We saw them with the advantage last year. We saw the opposition team having to fight through adversity and the Clippers could not even hold that off. So why when I have seen this team with the advantage crumble, would I expect them to stand up and make it through the disadvantage. There's zero reason to believe that when this team has its back against the wall, they will do anything besides cower. But now let's talk about the Clippers winning this series, which I don't expect to happen, but hey, it's happened before. You can lose both games on your home court, 
And it and you can still come back. It happens. I don't know why I'm being really a, a, a fake happy voice right now, but here we go. Really, how they win is going to depend entirely on stopping or at least slowing down Luca. Because even though they have their offensive issues, they don't pass the ball enough. Their offense is stagnant. They rely way too much on difficult shot making. In game one, the entire offense was Kawhi making tough shots, and that's a very th easy thing. And that's a relatively easy thing to guard when the shot is a little bit off today but regardless of that offense is not really the issue they can't do anything to slow down Luca or at the very least they are not putting in the effort to slow down Luca now if you think some guy on YouTube just because he has subscribers is gonna know more than an NBA head coach as how to stop one of the greatest generational offensive engines that I have ever witnessed in my lifetime well I don't I have some ideas, and I'll give them to you, but for the most part, I'm not going to be the one who comes up with the defensive strategy <laughs> that stops Luka Doncic. I'm just realizing, looking at this script, that I mentioned the making it personal thing, like, way too early. Um, that, that was the strategy. <laughs> okay. Uh, as for who actually needs to take the match up personally, which is just basically my whole point, uh, is Paul George because Kawhi Leonard has injury issues that result in him not really being able to play like over 40 minutes a game uh, and he needs to conserve his energy on offense now should that result in his defensive identity being diminished yes I kind of feel like it already has but it should be diminished even further but regardless, uh, if there's one player on this Clippers team that I can choose to duck out of the offense that's an important part of it, uh, between these two, it's going to be Paul George, because Paul George can be a detriment offensively just on accident half of the time. So taking him out of the equation is not going to be a big deal. So PG-13, playoff P. I don't give a fuck if you average eight points a game. I understand people on Twitter might slander you for it, but if you have to average eight points, average eight points. What he needs to do is take every single bucket by Luka Doncic personally. Put 150% of your effort into slowing this guy down. If Paul George does that, commits to that level, doesn't just fucking switch on defense the moment the idea of a screen comes up, then Luka will not just do the most ridiculous shit with absolutely zero effort. I'm not saying he's gonna be stopped. I don't think there's a single team in the league that can stop this guy. And I'm gonna make a video about Luka's greatness because of how ridiculous he's been thus far. But regardless, I do think you can prevent the bleeding a little bit. Also, uh, they were running a box and one on the, uh, on the Mavs in game two. Problem with that defensive scheme is it's kind of like a hybrid zone man-to-man -man type of deal. And any kind of zone defense gets picked apart by good shooting as well as good playmaking. The Mavericks have good shooting, they have good playmaking. That doesn't really work. So I don't know about that one. I would bring doubles when appropriate, but maybe do a little bit of zone in the way that like allows you to sometimes guard like two guys on the perimeter at once. So like you can bring help on one and then hope when the other one passes, it's enough time that you can recover all that. Uh, but regardless, just anything, just fucking punch him. I, I said this in my, in my, uh, in, in my recap video like if you think about it the Warriors in 2016 uh, the Cavaliers completely roughed up Steph Curry don't actually punch him but like make him feel your defense be a little physical that's gonna make a big difference like just just do fucking something really I, I, I can throw out ideas here there be physical bring doubles when appropriate don't leave shooters open put Paul George on him put all of his effort in that end but at the end of the day, all this is going to do is mean the Clippers lose in six instead of four. Because at the rate they are going after these first two games, I would be shocked if the Clippers won this series, to say the least. Because as I said, over the last two seasons now, they have given me no reason to believe they will do anything more than crumble under pressure. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and keep the outro music.